Hi, I'm Marika Hahn, and I'm an artist in residence at Mount Sinai Chelsea. I love everything about flowers. I love to paint them, and I also make them out of crepe paper, and I also make leaves, beautiful leaves, out of coffee filter flowers. Yes, plain old coffee filter, number four white coffee filters. So come with me, and we're going to explore how to make these beautiful ginkgo leaves. You're going to need cone filters. The amount is up to you. You need one filter front and back to make one leaf. You can see I have lots of color leaves that I've made waiting for, to show you. So you need coffee filters. You need a stem and this is a 24 gauge wire. You can use thinner. If you can't find a wire, you can always use a bamboo skewer, but it's really nice to have the wire because then you can bend the stem. I have scissors handy and I use glue all, Elmer's glue all. You can use glue all, you can use tacky glue. The most important thing, aside from the coffee filters, you need colorants. I teach watercolor painting and use liquid watercolors. Today we're using yellow, red, and, and green. We're also going to make orange by mixing yellow and red. You can use food coloring from the supermarket. You could use gel paste, sometimes from the supermarket or a Michael's store. So this is how you make the color. You always want to start with the lightest color. So these are two leaves that I've done, and this is using yellow and orange, which is just yellow and red mixed, and this is green, and I have some yellow at the top. The best thing about coffee filters in terms of making color, you see I'm just quickly brushing on some pale yellow. To make a color pale, you just add water. And then I'm going to put a strong orange on. I like to dry them on parchment paper. Parchment paper you can get in the supermarket. I'm going to wipe off the plastic plate. Everything that I use, plastic, all of that, I reuse again and again. And they're takeout containers or old Tupperwares. I'm going to show you how I like to do the green. I'm going to start with the light green. Be careful when you're doing the colors. You want the colors to be actually a little stronger than you would hope for because the colors fade when they dry. So I'm brushing on a light green, both sides, that's important. And now I'm going to take a darker green. To make the darker green, I just use the color green right from the bottle and I put a little brown in it. Now you're not going to get food coloring that's brown, so you mix about equal parts of red and green. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow along the top. Have fun mixing. Put in oranges, green, ginkgo leaves. You can look them up online if you like. They come in great colors. So I have one yellow, orange, and one green drying. So I'm going to take a filter that's already dry, and for this you can see I use green and a little brown, a little orange, and you can either have them pre-cut or I like to make, do my leaves and then I cut them. I'm going to fold up to the crimp part, and when I make the leaves, you can see that they're all fringed at the ends. I don't like to do all of the shaping until they're already assembled because you have to do a front and a back and it's too hard to line them up. So I'm just going to cut kind of a fan shape. When I get to the crimp, I'm going to turn. I'm going to come up a little bit and go all the way to the bottom. You want to have a really deep V. I'm going to cut a little notch where it folds. I'm going to open it up and this will make one leaf. going to wash out my brush, squeeze the water out, take some glue, and brush both sides, top and bottom, with the glue. Don't worry about getting glue on the other side of the leaf because you're going to glaze the leaf with diluted glue. That's going to give it a nice shine. So now both sides have glue. 
You can use this stem, the full length, if you have a tall vase that you're going to put it in. I'm going to cut it about in half. This wire is 24 gauge, and you can cut it. This is going to be the center. So right under the notch and straight down to the bottom, one straight line. I'm putting a little pressure on it, a little more glue over the wire. And now I don't have to line up the top perfectly because I'm not going to shape it until it dries. I'm going to use my finger, give it a good push. Ginkgo leaves have a wonderful texture to them. You can see the veins in them. So I'm going to take my bamboo skewer, the pointy end, and while it's still slightly wet from the glue being inside, I'm just going to make some lines. Whoops. Do it too hard to just straighten it out. It's glue. Okay. And I'm going to set this in a cup to dry at this point. The leaves have to be really dry before you pull them together. This is one that's been glued, and you can see how sturdy it is, and it's sturdy because of the glue. This is already dry, so the next stage would be after it dries and it's glued top and bottom, just cut little ridges Can add a little dip, but they're already stuck together, so you don't have to worry about aligning the top. I'm going to add a nice layer of diluted glue. I'll take my glue, water happens to be light green, doesn't matter. Mix some glue with water. You want to thin the glue out for the glaze. If you happen to have a little foam flower pad, these things, they're great. If you don't, just stick it in a cup. That works too. Okay, I'm going to show you, do another one. little notch. Pretty simple shape down at the bottom. I want to show it to you again. You can do it with a bamboo skewer. I just want to show you how that would work. You wouldn't be able to make it nice and bendy, but it would be okay. Glue. After you do a few of these, you kind of find your, your own method, but this is pretty much it. Some people do like to cut their shapes, but if you're doing a lot of leaves, and when I do this, I like to use a lot of leaves, it's really a nightmare trying to find the partner. Push your stem into it. What I forgot to show you when I did the last one is that you want to twist the bottom. You want to secure it around, whether it's a skewer or a wire. So that's, that's the only difference. But you can see, you can use a skewer. If you don't have the wires, don't not do the project. It's still great. Once you have a finished leaf, let's find one that's done. I don't use floral wire. I just like to take a strip of color. There's a little strip left from the green. I also made a brown filter for the stem and cut it into little strips. Take the green, go around just a tiny bit. And these, this leaf was cut from a scrap of coffee filter. I don't like to throw anything out, so I make leaves out of them. I made two little leaves, which you can, are fun to put in a bouquet. And then after you have about three quarters of an inch of green, the stem of the ginkgo is brown. I'm going to add a 
a little brown. Just keep turning it. It's long enough, it's going to be hidden in the base. Tear it. It's adorable to have a few of these little tiny leaves in your mixture. So you want to do these, you have different stages of drying. When they're all completely dry, These have the green, they have the brown, and you want to hold them together. You just take one piece of the brown, let's put a little glue on it, and you can bind them together. There's usually five leaves to a stem. And I like to change the size of them. So I stuck a little one in there. You can mold them. You can press them. You can mold them. You can curl them. They make them look very lifelike. And they're really quite sturdy. And I think they look beautiful. I'm going to stick it down into this vase and show you how pretty they look. It's nice to have flowers, but I think it's really pretty also to have assorted leaves. So there is my vase of ginkgo leaves, and I like to combine the colors too. So have fun and come back and join me when I do cherry blossoms.